Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Today, the doctor is in the house. Yes. 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 We're going to take questions uh, in a segment called Ask a Doctor Day. Yes. I love it. So, <laughs> yes, of course. So we went down to the Instagram for you, and uh, we're talking about your favorite home remedies, and mm. you know, you have responded. Thank you so much yes. for definitely engaging with us on Sister Circle TV at yes. Instagram and hey. Facebook. Yes. Dr. Day. Hey. Well, uh, <laughs> oftentimes when we self-diagnose ourselves or, yeah. you know, yeah. grandmama or, you mm -hmm. know, told us some remedy that we need to do to take care of ourselves. But as a doctor, yeah. in your opinion, mm -hmm. how safe is it for us to rely on natural or home remedies? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. should we just consult a doctor? Yeah, well, so, so to answer that last part, always consult your doctor, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the, you know, that's the attorney's uh, uh, <laughs> answer to that. But, you know, I mean, we love our grandmothers. We love our friends. Sometimes it, it's just the wrong information. And here's Dr. Dave's take on this thing. When it comes to our health, I don't really care where it comes from as long as it obeys two rules. One, it doesn't harm you. That was my oath before I went to medical school. Mm -hmm. First, do no harm. And number two, that it's effective. That it's doing what you think it's going to do. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. We have too many natural things that are out there that can harm you, mm -hmm. right? They might harm you, then won't harm somebody else because your physiology is different from right, somebody right, else. Right, right, One right. size doesn't fit all. I can't right. tell you how many people I'm taking off of a keto diet because yeah, it's, a, oh, you wow. know, it's a natural thing to do, but not mm -hmm. for them. Right. Um, and, and, and then there's things that can actually uh, you know, say that they're going to help you, but not. There's a, there was a study, New York uh, Attorney General back in 2015, she took some samples from some very large mm -hmm. stores that we know and love, took some samples and sent it to a chemist. She said, are the, the things that they, you know, purport are in these things, are they in there? Or are there things that are not on the label that are in there? And the answer is 21% of these things had what they said they had in it, mm -hmm. but a whole bunch of them had stuff that was, that not even was on the label. Wow. So, and it's not FDA, you know, approved. So we've got to be very hey. careful. I'm a, I'm a proponent of everything. Dr. Dave is a holistic Doctor, that means I take the whole thing, though. <laughs> we can't say don't, you know, don't use this over here and only use this and, and be holistic at the same time. I'm with you, Dr. Day. I agree yeah. with everything you said. <laughs> but what I don't agree was with, is with some of the things that are said down to this TV. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. let's and, see what you uh, come Let's up just with. see what the people said about some of these natural remedy, remedies. Now, I'm into natural remedies. Yeah. But this one is a letter to the left. <laughs> okay? Right. They say... Sleeping with onions down to your socks, to the socks. <laughs> gets rid of the common cold. Oh my God! Yeah, no, that is. Um, <laughs> um, so that, that that believe it or not, so a hundred okay. years ago, okay, um, there was this idea that. Um, uh, we got all our illnesses from noxious air. That's what they used to call it. That, okay. that you had a toothache and you got it from something in the air. Right. And that onions could actually purify the air. Oh. You know, there, there's probably something there, right? But this was one of those old things. You put some chopped up onions in your sock, go to sleep with them, wake up and your cold is gone. I mean, obviously there's some really nice properties in onions, mm -hmm. you know, B vitamins, you know, some mm -hmm. other antioxidants. <laughs> Uh, but you got to eat them. Right. You put them on your in you your can't feet, put them down. And, 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 then, feet. And, then, and then yeah, you don't don't hey. do that one. Okay. Don't do that. All right. All right. All right. Let me take yeah. it. Dr. Dave, let's move on to the next one. This is from yeah. Nicole. At I am Nicole. She wants to know if warming up olive oil and rubbing it on her child's ear gets rid of uh, ear infections. Yeah. So so believe it or not, this is um, this is not that far off. So some people might be like, oh, you warm some olive oil. Um, there are, um, so, so ear infections are really, really common in the pediatric population. We don't get to talk about them a lot. Um, you know, most kids before seven or eight years old will have an ear infection. Mm -hmm. And what we found is not that the infection, the bacteria that causes most of the ear infections gets soothed with some of that oil, mineral oil, olive oil, different oils, but that you can actually take care of some of the pain, what we call otalgia, mm -hmm. um, not the otitis media that, uh, for, the, for the science geeks out there. Mm -hmm. The otitis media is the infection. The otalgia is the pain, and so that oil can kind of help some of the pain. Uh -huh. yeah. I remember doing that, that especially one. as a swimmer. We put, we put a lot of oil oh, in here. Mineral oils, and I, like hear, that. I can hear fine. That's right. <laughs> 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 I'm good. Okay, so uh, this one we've been hearing about a lot lately, and that's yeah. turmeric. At the daytime, 17 says turmeric is her go-to cure for everything, and it does wonders for her arthritis. Yeah, daytime. That's uh, that's actually that's right. Um, so Ooh. I use a lot of turmeric in my office uh, for people who have different inflammatory conditions. Mm -hmm. So um, what we don't really understand though is inflammation is just rampant. So mm -hmm. people who have cardiovascular diseases, there's some. 
cardiovascular diseases, heart diseases that are due to inflammation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm prescribing turmeric over the counter all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, there's things like uh, complications from obesity, like metabolic just, syndrome. Just it's actually just that. a low-level inflammatory state, and we give people turmeric for that. I was gonna, and I was gonna ask you that because I know that, um, um, well, I, you know, I know that being obese causes a, you know, a ton of different health pro property yeah. problems, but. Um, it's fat. I've heard that, like you hear the term fat being inflammatory. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah. and so that the more weight you lose, the less uh, chances you have, you have of having these inflammation um, yeah, issues. Yeah. You hit right? it right on the head. I, before I left Northwestern oh, in my fellowship, I actually studied obese women. Yes. And uh, the 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 truth of the matter is, this would actually scare you. We took the blood, we spun it down, and we looked at the plasma. It should be mm. nice and clear, like straw colored. Mm. It was sticky and slimy, yeah. and that's all the inflammatory markers. And we got all kinds of names for them, but that's, we used to think that fat just sits there and takes up space, but it's no, very it's really, active. It's, it's infused. Inflammatory, oh you're God. just kind of swimming in it, literally, yes. we took blood. That and these women felt good. fine. I mean, it's not like they had a cold or something, and you, but it's all those inflammatory substances, yes. and if, if that's swimming around in your blood, guess what it's doing to your organs? Mm. Is, is, is there a test you can take that to like detect how much inflammation yeah. you're suffering from? Yeah, absolutely, and we do it We do it at, at Preden. Um, but okay. yes, there are a number of different ones that, that we can test. There's one that's very, very affordable. Nice. So, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. I have one. Yes. And this is from Lady Lioness 81. She wants to know if gargling every day with mouthwash cures sore throats. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, who hasn't? I've, I've done Stay something gargling. like that before, mm -hmm. you know, the gargle and stuff. <laughs> So there is something to say that, so the ear, nose, and throat docs, mm -hmm. the otolaryngologists that we call mm -hmm. them, um, there are a little, there's a little bit of debate with that one. So they, um, he, here's what they agree on. They agree that if you um, drink warm liquids with, you know, some teas, mm -hmm. particularly, <laughs> well, you could, you could do some, some, some hot water. Cayenne pepper, yeah. lemon. Yeah. 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 So you gotta be careful with the cayenne tea. pepper because what they're saying is if you, if you gargle or swallow noxious things that can irritate the already inflamed, oh. you know, throat. Mm -hmm. And if you've got an infection back there, it's not gonna do anything but make it worse. I thought it always helped me out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gargling okay. Okay. All, all the time. Yeah, no, there's a lot of that make stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. That may not be it, but you know, some nice hot tea, you know, some white tea, some green tea, avoid the caffeine so you and, won't and dehydrate the area. Awesome. So. Well, Ooh. Dr. Dave, you're right. always fantastic. Yeah, uh, Thank you to our time amazing uh, fans and followers of the show for That's participating in this yeah. as Great well. Questions. For more information on what Dr. Dave is doing, check out his preventative care practice at yes. preventatl.com.